wondering if you qualify for a Pell Grant? Many students find out too late that they don't. In this video, we are going to go over how you can figure it out before you start applying. Hello, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and this is the College Lightbulb, where we illuminate your college path. On this channel, we do a lot with career exploration by interviewing people in various careers you might be exploring. We also give tips and strategies on college lists, college admissions, college scholarships, how to fund college, how to get free money, and how to be successful at college. If you're new to this channel, we would love it if you would subscribe. So how do you find out if you qualify? for the Pell Grant. One of the easiest ways to do it before you fill out your FAFSA is to actually, we provide a free tool right on our website, thecoachingeducator.com. You'll see a little pig and it'll say free EFC. And I want you to go in there and get a report. It's free. It is very important for you to understand if you actually qualify. And that's the case that we talk about for many of, of the scholarships as well. So if you look in our scholarship series, we really talk about this EFC tool because it's so important for you to understand whether or not you qualify for not only the Pell Grant, but university grants and or scholarships. So the next thing you need to know is if you have received a waiver from your school and the school has done it the right way, um, where they don't just hand it to you, you actually, many people will be given a waiver because they qualify financially. And how you can find that out is if you received a waiver from your school. When you receive a waiver for taking your SAT or your ACT, and it would be very important to know if you qualify for that waiver, you can actually look it up yourself. And we'll provide a link below. And you can find it on the SAT College Board site. And you can just put in SAT waiver, even if you're taking an ACT, and it will give you a nice chart that is based on your family size and how much income your parents can make or the family household can make. And that will tell you if you actually qualify for a waiver. And if you qualify for a waiver because of financial need, then you will most likely get a Pell Grant. And that's really important for you to know. Another really important tip that has been a little bit of a tragedy for many people is they don't understand that if they already have a degree and they're going back to school, they cannot get another Pell Grant. If they received, uh, they can't even get it if they've already earned their bachelor's degree. So it's important for you to understand that once you've completed one bachelor's degree, even if your financial situation isn't as good as it was when you were first going to school and got your first bachelor's degree, that you will most likely not receive a Pell Grant. They don't allow it. The thing to also remember, it's super important for you to not lose the opportunity for a Pell Grant. So one of the ways that you can lose the opportunity is if you drop down and only take one course, your Pell Grant that you had, that may be a full Pell Grant, will also drop. So it's important for you to understand that if you have a full Pell Grant, then their expectation is that you are in school full time. And that means 12 credits minimum. So if you cut it down to two credits, two classes, then what happens is your Pell Grant gets cut in half. And just because you qualify for a Pell Grant does not mean you get the full Pell Grant. And it's really clear once you look at your FAFSA, it will actually provide for you the number that you qualify for. One of the other ways that you can lose a Pell Grant is if you actually get on academic probation. And this can be if you have two semesters in a row and you either dropped or you have failed or, you ha and, or your grade point average has dropped below a certain level. Generally, they will ask you to fill out a waiver, but if you have two semesters in a row, most of the colleges 
will um, will not provide the Pell. They'll ask you maybe to go to a community college for a bit. They'll ask you to um, reconsider or, or meet with different people. And it may be the financial aid office. It may be an advisor in the financial aid office. But you can create a situation where you will not be receiving that Pell Grant. So it's important for you to know these things. And if you have any other questions for about the Pell Grant, those are just four different things that you need to know that will help you to better understand it. But I will answer any questions. So comment down below. I'll answer any question that you need answered and we will get back to you and we'll help explain whatever it is that may not be clear. So leave a comment or leave a tip if you have any other tips about the Pell Grant. You uh, People who are applying and in the process of working through school oftentimes have some really great tips. We also will be providing a Pell Grant checklist download. So you can go to thecoachingeducator.com, free downloads, and you can uh, find that download and go ahead and download it and help you understand more about the Pell Grant. I'm going to leave you with one last tip that it is very, very important. The only way to get a Pell Grant is to actually fill out the FAFSA. So it's important that you do that. It's important that you do that because many colleges also, if you qualify for a Pell Grant, they also have university grants that they will also supplement. So many kids who receive a Pell are going to a more expensive private school will actually get the qualify for the university grant as well that supplements the Pell. So it's important for you to do these things. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll. Thank you for watching. Please share and like our videos.